Um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, to have a chance to share a, a, a personal story uh, of flying and words, uh, which relates to some of the themes uh, in, in Imagine a City. Uh, I'm not the first pilot uh, for, by any means to find joy in writing. Uh, there's actually quite a few pilots who, uh, who write, whether that's for publication or for their, just for their own families and, and their, own, uh, uh, their own communities. Um, and, and there are so many of us that I often, I'm often struck by, by how different these two roles are. Um, flying, of course, is incredibly structured. Uh, it's based around procedures uh, and checklists uh, and manuals. It's, it's very rule bound, um, despite or perhaps because of the freedom we may associate with flying. Um, even, even the words we use uh, as pilots in the flight deck um, are pretty much all written, all the work related ones are written down in a manual, what you say and when and, 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 and how we understand them. And of course, uh, while there's nothing simple about, about flying to the far side of the world, uh, there is a, there is a, a sort of a linearity or, or at least a simplicity uh, to our journeys, at least in a narrative sense, in the sense that uh, we begin in one city, we fly along a planned uh, structured route and we land in another city. Uh, and then we um, sign the logbook, and and uh, and that's the end of that task until we next come to work. Uh, writing, of course, uh, uh, is very different. Um, there's uh, the structure of to you, which is another way of saying there isn't a structure. Uh, the rules are few, and you're uh, suggested, to, you know, it's suggested to, to break them down. Uh, there are many routes to your destination uh, as a writer, um, and that's assuming you know your destination. Um, many articles I write, and certainly the books I've written. End up, and of course, uh, maybe you don't even know when you've reached your destination. Maybe your destination as a writer is wherever you uh, you run out of time, or your uh, your editors uh, run out of patience. Um, but I, I do think that flying and writing have something in common in, uh, for me, and and that revolves mostly around notions of connection. Uh, you know, airplanes, of course, um, literally connect people across borders and, and oceans and mountain ranges. Uh, on every flight uh, are business people uh, and, of course, tourists going to see a new part of the world. But there are also, of course, people who are, um, who are emigrating, who are going to uh, family reunions, uh, to weddings, to funerals. Um, those scenes I see in an arrivals hall every time I get off a flight, uh, departures hall, departure halls as well, but especially arrival halls, uh, remind me that, of the importance of some of the journeys. Uh, and, for example, there, it reminds me as well of my parents uh, who grew up on different continents and whose, uh, whose lives um, uh, my, and my life as well depended on a, a few uh, well And of course, writing, uh, I don't need to, uh, I hardly need to mention it uh, to a five by 15 audience who've gathered online like this, um, but writing is all about uh, connection. Uh, it's a way of moving across uh, our personal identities, our, across borders, language, cultures, uh, miles, uh, years, perhaps above all all the things that might otherwise tend to separate us. Uh, and so for me, I, I've always been struck by E.M. Forrester's uh, epigraph, Only Connect. Uh, and for me, that, 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 that sum summarizes what, uh, you know, what flying and writing have in common for me. So if we bring up the, uh, the first slide here, we see a, uh, an image uh, which is from my childhood bedroom. Um, this is uh, in the late 80s, I guess, in, uh, in Western Massachusetts in a city called Pittsfield. Um, and no one who knows me now would be um, surprised to see uh, uh, that it's filled with airplanes uh, and also with uh, Pittsfield, uh, my hometown, uh, has an important role in Imagine a City uh, in the new book, uh, even though that book is also about some of the largest cities that have ever existed. Uh, Pittsfield uh, is about three hours north of New York and about two hours west of Boston. Um, it has uh, some remarkable history for a small place. It was where the uh, the first agricultural fair was held in the US, uh, which has become a national um, pastime. Uh, speaking of pastimes, it's uh, where the first uh, written references to baseball. Um, and on, on, the, on thinking of institutions like baseball, um, um, it was also the, uh, the location of the baseball game. And it's also where Herman Melville wrote Moby Dick. So he was, uh, he was uh, in a farmhouse uh, surrounded by uh, snowy fields and hills in this fairly small uh, inland settlement, not yet a city, still, still a town of just a few thousand people uh, writing about his uh, journeys to the far side of the world. So when I look at this picture, I see, um, I see the, the themes that have come to mean the most to me um, uh, as an adult, as a professional. Um, 
But I also have an, a, a sort of emotional reaction to it, which isn't entirely positive. Um, uh, so growing up as a gay kid in a place as small as Pittsfield at that time was, you know, wasn't entirely easy. And for me, uh, you know, airplanes symbolized escape, and, and so did books. Um, I associated both of those with uh, with ways of being other than uh, than where I was. Um, I even had, you know, if I think about words um, in another sense, um, I had a speech impediment growing up. I had a lot of difficulty saying this that hard American R, uh, which meant um, I had trouble uh, saying even my own name, uh, Mark, uh, which people wouldn't understand sometimes. And my father uh, was once commenting on that American R. Um, and pointed out that different languages have different R's. And I thought, as a kid, I didn't say this to him, but I said, I, I myself, oh, well, I'll just learn one of those languages, uh, move to one of those countries, um, and I'll be able to, to speak freely and, and, and live freely. And um, what, what you can't see in this picture uh, is my desk, uh, uh, which is off to the left out of the frame. And that's uh, and that childhood desk, uh, which faced east and looked over the bird, I also associate with words and airplanes because it's it's where I wrote a lot of letters to my pen pals. I was uh, I had lots of pen pals um, in uh, I had one in the Philippines, uh, one in Australia, one in Finland, and I would write on these aerograms, which I'm not even sure they exist anymore. Um, but they are it was a, a sheet of paper um, which you would a very lightweight paper that you would fold up um, after you wrote on it and then seal uh, without any enclosures, and it was effectively pre-stamped. Um, and they were light because they would go on airplanes. They would go on, on via airmail um, all over the world. And I, I had one uh, pen pal in particular um, who, I, who I was in close contact with, and her name was Lily. She was in Hong Kong. And when I would write on those envelopes, I would write her name and then her street and then Chung Chao uh, and then the postal code. Uh, and I assumed Chung Chao was just a district of Hong Kong. Um, and I would send them off. Uh, we told each other all about our hometowns, um, and I told her about Pittsfield and this, you know, the the, the winters and the uh, and the hills and the bears. And she told me about the skyscrapers and the the sort of heaving harbor and um, and all the things that astonished me when I would hear about a place like that. So there, um, and I, I suppose I I last wrote to her probably when I was seventeen. Uh, that was just before email, um, so we we lost touch then. And fast forwarding, uh, I went to university. I, I started a PhD in history. I never finished it. Uh, and I eventually became a pilot, uh, fulfilling that childhood dream. Uh, learned to fly the 747 uh, after uh, flying short haul routes within Europe for several years. Um, there's a 747 there on the dresser. Um, it's a Pan Am one. I had a few others that are, that are out of frame. Um, and then it came uh, for the night that I would first fly a 747. And the, the destination of that flight was to Hong Kong. So if we look on the next slide, um, we see uh, a, an, air, an, an airfield chart for, for Hong Kong. And these, are, these charts are designed to help pilots move uh, to and from and around a major airfield. Uh, and it's filled with, uh, you know, with frequencies, uh, communication frequencies, and uh, heights, uh, which is obviously significant there with the mountains and skyscrapers. And it also has a lot of beacons on it. And these beacons allow uh, a pilot uh, the aircraft to tune, to tune in a beacon. And then from that, we can determine our bearing from the beacon distance in some cases as well. Uh, and on the, on the night I first flew a 747, uh, we, we flew an arrival pattern into Hong Kong. And I was looking at the charts beforehand. And I looked down and I saw this beacon, uh, which is highlighted uh, Chung Chao. Um, and um, Jack, if we can just bring up the next uh, version there. Yes, that's a beacon, um, and you can see the, the little blue uh, line on, along uh, the right side pointing off to an island. Um, and so I saw, I saw that on the map and then overflew it and thought, wow, I guess that's where Lily lived. Um, and then we landed, I landed the plane and, and went off to, to explore the city. And Hong Kong became a city I got to know very well. Um, it's a city that's easy to love for visitors. Uh, the food is amazing, obviously, and uh, there's lots of urban hikes, uh, which you can do. Uh, and I, I probably went there, I don't know, 20 or 30 times. And when I would fly in, I would I would pass that beacon at Chung Chao, and I would think about Lily, but I never thought of a way to reach out to her. Um, I didn't know where she would live now, if she was even in still, still in Hong Kong. 
fast forward again a little bit, uh, and then the pandemic arrived, uh, and I flew throughout the pandemic. Um, but it was a very um, strange time to be flying, uh, goes without saying, and it really challenged uh, my notions of, of, of connection. Uh, we were mostly flying cargo, um, uh, protective equipment, medical equipment, uh, ordinary cargo. And we were staying uh, no longer in city centers, but in airport hotels. In some of those hotels, we couldn't leave the hotel during our entire stay there. And in some of them, we couldn't even leave our room. We would have uh, a key card uh, that was programmed to only work once. Um, this is around the time I was finishing Imagine City. So I, I spent a lot of time in these hotel rooms uh, writing about the cities around me that I couldn't see um, and writing about Pittsfield, uh, this place uh, that I had uh, um, come from um, and that, that seemed so far away when I was in these airport hotels and yet was still in my imagination a very important place um, and, and formed a large part of the book. Then uh, this year, a few months ago, uh, Hong Kong unlocked um, and uh, we went back and uh, having realized what it would be like to never see the city again, I thought, well, I should really go to Chung Chow. I, I should just go. I should just go and see this place where my pen pal once lived. So if we look at the next slide, this is a, uh, a gray day a few months back. I think it was in, in March or beginning of April in Hong Kong. Um, and I thought, I'm going to take one of the commuter ferries out to Chung Chow. Um, uh, fair, I love ferries. They're a great way to explore cities, a great way to, to take a break from walking, which is the other thing I mainly do in cities. Um, and eventually this boat um, pulls into the harbor at Chung Chow. And my first, uh, my first feeling was, I was just astonished at what a small place it was. I had always thought she was, you know, living in, a, uh, in an apartment tower somewhere. Um, and I thought, oh, this, is, this isn't a very big place at all. Um, so I looked on a map and suddenly without even really trying to think of it, the name of her street popped into my head. Um, and then the number did as well. So I thought, well, I've got a few hours here. Um, I'll just walk down her street. Um, and so if we jump to the next slide, uh, I walked uh, down her old street and I passed her house number and then, uh, which is off to the left. And on the right is a very small urban park. Uh, it was a very hot day. I was uh, probably a little sleepy. Um, so I thought, I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to sit in this park for a little while um, and, and think about, um, and think about what it meant to have written letters that I would, you know, I would write those aerograms and fold them up and, and take them down uh, to the mailbox through the snow. And then they would get on a plane, almost certainly a 747, um, and would end up uh, arriving in Hong Kong and then being carried to a house that I could now look at. Um, and I thought about what her letters coming back to me meant, that the letters that began there um, would, would, would travel all the way to Pittsfield, a place that, I mean, it's hard to imagine a more different place. Um, is, is the, the shorter version of it. So I was sitting there and just thinking about what what what, what those connections meant to me and, and what it meant to have friends on, on, on the far side of the world and, and to anticipate uh, a life beyond um, circumstances I found charming. Uh, when all of a sudden I looked up and, and I saw two people coming down the street. One was an elderly man and with him was a, a woman around my age. Uh, and uh, before I could stop myself, I, I didn't even think about it. I just ran up and I said, uh, and I walked up to her and I said, uh, Lily, it's me, it's, it's Mark, it's your pen pal. Um, and she looked at me and, and she said, oh my God, of course it's you, of course, of course. Um, we'd exchanged so many photos back then. Um, and, and uh, you know, she said, I've, I've followed your writing. Um, I, I, I follow you on Facebook and, and, and Twitter and, and I, I read your articles and books and, and they were just, uh, um, such a great joy. Um, and uh, she said to me, and then she said to me, uh, you know, I've just, um, I'm just going to help my father upstairs. It's time for his nap and I'm going to put my shopping away uh, and then I'll come back down. Um, she said, um, I know the perfect place to have lunch.